what do you think? This is not a look you're going to see me wearing very often. I think it's pretty cool. I have a wedding to go to. I've got to get a bow tie. I'm a woodcarver, so I'm going to make one. Here it is, uh, and I'm going to show you how to make your own bow tie. So I'd have my piece of wood. I've got my working drawing. And in this case, I've put it onto a, printed it onto a label, scanned it in, printed it out on a label. I stuck it onto another piece of this wood, which I cut out on the bandsaw. This is um, a lot thicker than I want, I think, but um, it's better to have more wood than, than less. And I've glued it down to a piece of plywood, which I'll hold in the vise, with some uh, watercolour paper, quite thick paper, and diluted glue. This is called the paper sandwich, and I'll put a link below uh, this video where you can see more about that. So here it is, my carving ready to, ready to go. I've got my model, got my thoughts and my drawings ready to go. What I'm trying to do now is visualise what I'm going to be doing. So I know if we look side on here like this, I know that this is not going to be this, this foot here. So this is going to be perhaps something like that. So there will be wood coming across here. Now there'll be a high spot here to begin with, I might take it back somewhere like this. So I know that this is going to come down perhaps like that. And it's going to come down here like there because there's this little side uh, wing here, the little back ribbon, and that'll be back here at this sort of level. And on this side, I know that this edge here is higher than this edge. This is, this is sloping back. So this will come over here again. There'll be this up here. It'll come up to the height but this edge will be back here. Now I needn't worry about that for the moment. I'll just concentrate on that. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to leave. So I'm going to leave a high spot here, a high spot here. I'm going to drop that back. And I'm also going to come this way, of course, because that's important. And I've got to think about how that lies. Does it lie a little bit like this at that angle? And I think it will, so that we show this off a little bit. So I'm going to slope it that way. So I'm trying to use my hand and sort of think, how would I like that bow to go like that? So having got that in my mind, how I want to work, I now start the actual carving. I'm actually going to start the carving with a saw. I'm going to put a cut down here, like there and there, like this, and cut the grain. I can now come downhill from here, the high spot, into there like that. See how that just breaks off. Makes life so much easier. So I'm going to start with a, a cut this way and get that plane right. what's happening I'm coming round like this and round like that I think this is this is too too fat here 
uh, so that will go back. But that's the sort of idea. We're trying to come round in this plane now, and then we'll follow it with that plane. So get this reasonably tidy at this stage. Get this to the height you want, and these to the height. So we can say, here's a high spot, here's a high spot, here's a high spot at the depth we want. Here's an interesting technique. Uh, it, it uses the, the, the way wood works in the same way that we use the saw. Let's say that our um, s the second wing of the bow tie that's sticking out behind is, is sort of there. What you can do is as you come across here, you can deliberately sink this corner like this. And what will happen is it'll push the wood out like this so we come round like this. You see that short grain will just burst off quite quite accurately actually. The alternative is to put a V-tool along it like so. Now you can do that later but that's a good technique to come over and normally we don't drop the corner but we can drop our corner here and bring that round and the second wing will take care of itself. So we make that We'll make this one at this stage as well, this second wing. So this first pass in this direction gives us a profile along here of the main section. This ribbon here, this part of the bow is going to come round and eventually be undercut a little bit here, but for the moment just come straight down and don't undercut uh, because once we undercut we've fixed our position and the same here, so just come straight down. There's still a first you know roughing out. So now we've done this way we can say here's here's our high spot here, somewhere here's a high spot, somewhere here's a high spot. So now we can turn to going in this plane in this direction. So we can come downhill here and we know according to my model here, I've got this, uh, this sort of fold here. So I've got, to, I've got to make sure I get that in. So I'm going to start working on that. So the fold is going to come down here in this corner and then this has got to be rounded over. So uh, if I just go to a little bit smaller tool. So this if I just do that, you can almost see I've got two edges. I've got a back edge here, there, this one, and I've got the front edge there. So that's what I'm looking at here. But I think I don't want this so high, so I've got to take this down, start modelling this shape down. So this high spot is coming downhill here. I'm now looking at the, the front edge and of course it's going to drop quite well back into the bow down here. So there's a sort of channel this side of that um, high spot and it'll come around here and this will affect this edge. So this won't be straight, this will be a slightly um, S-shape. Here we are. I think you can see what's going on here. So this is this side. We've come fairly well down. This is just rounded over. Uh, it's not undercut in any way. And what I'll do now is turn it over and I'll start bringing this down. And in order to get this to look full, we have to take wood away. So this can't be this high. So this is going to go down and then we'll have to cut it back at some point.
end of this stage, rough bossing in, we've got the two main bows, we've got a lump in the middle here, we've got the start of some shape, um, a high spot here coming down and these are going to be pinched inside the knot. We've got a second uh, bow at the back sorting to appear and we've got this sort of rough shape starting to appear. No undercutting, just made sure I haven't even addressed the outlines. Um, but if we get to this stage, that's the first bossing in, then the next stage will be to start developing some of these, some of these forms. I'm switching to tools that are a little bit narrower, quarter inch, six mil, and we're gonna give a little bit more shape now to the knot. Get a little bit more rounded. The thing about the knot is it does go, of course, round and underneath like this. So we can follow that shape around. Okay. Don't make it too small, because remember we've got to fit a ribbon on the back to hold this thing to the collar. But this neck, this, this will go around. I'll just do one side at the moment. I'm just coming down here. Now this ribbon is going to go underneath that. So I'm going to start um, just cleaning this up a little bit. This is back on this surface. So we're trying to get that neat. We're going to sand this so we can try and get our cuts fairly clean. So this part will be undercut. So as this, this comes under here, you can take, you can knock that out like that and you can slightly undercut it. What will happen is as you go along, you want to join up this bit and that bit here. So you've got a bit of an irregular edge along here. It's not a tube of cardboard. It's, it is a tube, it's, it's longer than it is this way, I think, on this bow. But um, an irregular edge is more realistic than, than something that's just straight. So make sure that goes a little bit irregular. Then over here, this knot here has got to come round and underneath. So what it means is I'm gonna have to trim this back a little bit remove this bit here so that it appears if it goes under the knot and the same on this side here. So make sure we, we you know, include that sort of idea. Then when it comes to these, um, these folds, I'm keeping them simple, just I've got two folds. I've got a fairly gentle one here and I've got one that, that sort of ends, fairly stronger one over there. You can mix them around like this. This fold, on this fold, although we're going to soften this edge off, this is an edge where the gouge has come, this will be softened off. These all want to be pointing, everything pointing into that knot. What we've got is a, a sort of explosion of the bow out from the knot. So we want to get that idea. This fold here at the top, this gentle, more gentle fold, this one can come over the back eventually, but we'll deal with that in a moment. So just keep working 
working this. Don't put anything um, anything in here yet. We will be shaping this to give it a sort of knot feel, but at the moment that still remains just a shape. We're trying to get these coming under the knot like that. Here's my high spot and I've come downhill this way. I'm now going to come downhill over the end of the ribbon. Oops, make sure that's firmly gripped. So turn around like this. Now this end is going to have to come round. So this is going to come round like this and under underneath there. I've got a bit of a a, a sort of S S -y shape here. So this bit here is a bit flatter. So bring that round and this is a little bit scooped out over this side too. So bring those over and then I'm going to just need to turn the carving around so you can see the next bit. Right, so I've come over here and I'm following that shape around and I'm actually going to start going underneath here. So this leaves this ledge of wood for the back. This bit of the ribbon is undercut here and this bottom bit slopes, the bottom part slopes down and into it. Here's the end of the ribbon here and this edge, this, this fold rather, is coming round like that. A little tricky to get into these places because of this wood and we might have to finish that off when we get the um, get the bow off the back, backing wood. But this is undercut here, this is undercut here, and this is the edge as it comes round. So I can um, do what I said I do, take that, check that, nice shape. Not undercutting yet, we will undercut a little bit in there, and then pick up this, this bit here, and then I'm going to start setting in this edge so that it actually runs underneath there. Here we are at the end of the modelling stage, looking very much like a bow tie now I think. You can see, if I come to the side like this, you can see how we, we go under here and under here. And I've actually cut into the, into the background a little bit as I made my undercutting. I've got a nice sort of hill here going on. This underneath 
going to nothing. Nothing is undercut around here yet. Okay, and I've got a sort of blob going on in the middle. So the next stage, our final stage, is to put in not so much details, but more refinements of this modeling. So we'll make some of these a bit tighter, we'll undercut here, and so on, make something of the knot. And at the end of that stage, we'll be able to take it off the wood. We've already set in this edge here, and we want to make sure that this is the edge of the ribbon, that it follows around and becomes this edge here. And we're going to actually leave a little bit of edge, but this will need to be undercut there. And the edge of the ribbon is a little bit along here. So we're going to leave just a millimetre or so, so that that actually shows a little bit of light caught in it. It's also strengthened the edge. Now, because of the grain going in this direction, I can go downhill here, which is really very useful. So essentially, I'm going to take a deep gouge and I'm going to just remove wood in there like that. Turning to the top side of the bow here, again I should have this edge shaped. So this edge is a finished edge along here, set in there. Here is the end of the bow coming round, but in this case we don't have to create any sort of backing really, because this will be up against the collar. So we can just undercut a lot of that like this. Just come down about what am I about 30 40 degrees, something like this. Right up. So, this is undercut. The bottom one, which we'll see, is more of a, more of an actual loop. This one you won't see. So we can leave that like that. What I didn't mention was this little ribbon here. And I think if you have a small gouge, you can just scoop that out in the way you scoop this one. If you don't, you have a small gouge, we can still use this tool with a sort of little bit of an optical illusion. All we could do is create a shadow, sort of like that. And we can do this by taking the same gouge as we had here, and just pushing it in like that, taking a, a scoop out down into the back. So there's a little shadow created there. That's what we're doing. If I look at the other side here, you can see how much it's been undercut. You see, quite a bit. But uh, to lose weight, we could take more away from that. But that's a, a later thing. Here, on this point, this undercutting there, I've continued across this one as well. So, so the, both the top and the bottom of the ribbon, and the back ribbon, shall we call it, have been undercut and set in. And we should have come round and stabbed into the background here so that when we cut that paper, this will pop off. So the next thing now, as we've done these bits, is to turn to the knot itself. Then what we're going to do is, is not really do a realistic knot, like a bit of rope, but more like a sort of, you almost call it a carver's knot, sort of bit of um, jiggery pokery that gives a sense of a knot without it without really being one. So what we'll do is we'll make a big cut, a sort of scoop in here like this and then we'll make another scoop over there like this so it's the, the knot sort of S's along and that's amazingly effective uh, as a knot on the on appearance uh, nobody really looks and says oh that's that's not a real knot it just gives you a sense of a knot so the first thing then is to make this big scoop over here so once you've got this shape ready you can take this back here, nice big 
screw, probably just a bit over halfway like that. And what that'll do is it comes round, it'll break up this outline a little bit. So instead of it being a blob, it now becomes a little bit, a little bit um, softer. And then on the other side, here, we'll put a second cut, perhaps coming over, over this way like this. So, so you see the two are crossing over a little bit like that and we can soften these off. We're going to sand it so we don't need to worry too much about this. That's where am I? But we just take these edges off a little bit like so, soften that and on this side and then we can actually um, add other little bits like this. A little, little half bit going over there. I want to say just a couple more things about this knot. Uh, we've got a good side light so you can see that these edges are quite hard. This needs to be softened and it will be when we sand it. But you see this sort of S shape going on here. That's what I really want to show you. And it breaks up the whole uh, bobbin uh, cylinder type surface. But these cuts need to come round and break up this outline a little bit so we don't have this knot uh, looking uh, symmetrical. So this is coming round, the tool went round into there a little bit, into the background. So now we've got that knot in done. We've done everything over here. Make sure it's as clean as you can and then we can get on to sanding. And for sanding I would I would do it while it's still on the board here. Start, um, I don't know, what do we got? Start with something like 120 grit <coughs> here. You, you, at, at most, you shouldn't really need to start with anything less, uh, more or less than that. And then you can get up to 180, uh, three, 320, that's a very fine sandpaper. So what we can do is to really get this surface and the grain of the wood, remember we've chosen a wood that's got a nice um, figuring in it, we're going to get that really nicely um, showing and it'll only show if we get it very fine. So, so we can start sanding and remember that you work with one, one grit all over, then you can wipe that all off, then you work with the second grit and the finer sandpaper removes the marks from the other the, the sandpaper before like that and uh, and then eventually towards we get to the end we'll wet it but let me get on with this for the moment and uh, get some of that shape so I really enjoy this stage it's only a little bit of carving and I don't normally sand uh, I have a face mask and I'd work as much as you can with the grain like this so this is my fine sandpaper Oh, it's actually 320 grit here. So what I'm going to do now is get a damp rag and wet it and you'll see how see how the colour changes immediately. Now this is a good thing for two reasons. It's going to lift the grain up and then we're going to re-sand it. But also you can see the effect of something like oil would have if you use it on the surface. Now here I can see quite strong grains coming out of the figuring and I don't want that. So, it, But it does give you an idea of how that colour might be affected by any finish that you put on. So it's, it gives you a sense of that as well. So once I've done this, let that dry. I'll go over it again with my fine sandpaper and then we're ready to remove it from the, uh, from the backing board. There's definitely some places that you'll be able to get to better uh, when it's off the board. So that's what we're going to do now. We get our spatula and we're going to find uh, where the, the paper is and sort of work it around like this. The, the trick is to keep it flat, not prize. We just work it forward like this. There we 
go. And there's our bow tie off the, the backing board. So we see we've got all this at the back. What we'll do, what I suggest we do is we just get sort of sandpaper on a flat surface and rub it like this, get that paper off. And then we can look at the back here and do any sort of cleaning up around this edge that we might need to do. Here's the back sanded off. Whatever vice you're using, you want to pad it. And I've, I've used some carpet underlay here and double-sided tape to sort of stick it down. And it really wants to be wide enough to grip it here through this, this strong bit. So putting it in there. doesn't have to be too tight because it just got a knot move and now I can get at these bits here and I can uh, undercut that a bit more if I want and then I can tidy up these notches so I'm going to go around the back all these little bits tidy them up I've already done this side here you can see I've just cut down here trim that up make sure this is all neat around the back sand any bits that you hadn't got at and then it's ready for finishing. Here's our finished carving. All the edges have been complete. Before we do the finish though, the actual finish, we need to work out where the strap is going to go. And I've taken a strap off that uh, rather nasty bow tie that I started with. So this is what I'm going to use. Um, you need something that's adjustable. And a bit of experimenting showed me that actually a really good thumbtack or push pin or what we call a drawing pin in the USA uh, in the UK here this will be enough to pin that uh, strap there across here like this so I'll do that later the other thing to mention is that this this wood is really light but it might be that if you've got a heavy wood you might hollow out some of the wood here in this area once you've worked out where this um, uh, this strap goes. I wouldn't put just one point in the middle because it'll tend to do this. So I would put two points here. So uh, having worked out the strap, having thought about whether you want to hollow it, um, we're ready to put a finish on it. So what finish are we going to use? Well, if I use oil, then I know the figuring is going to come out a lot more. So I'm not going to do that. Happy to have it a light color. I'm going to use uh, an oil wax finish. Um, I'll put some notes about that below or in the um, in the download. You could use acrylic varnish. I wouldn't make it shiny because this is fabric. So although it's smooth, um, it's um, it's still fabric and still wants to be. I think wants to be uh, sort of polished, if anything. So with my oil wax finish, I'm going to just brush this on, and you can see even with this, you get a degree of the lines coming through. These are light, I don't think they really mind too much, but, um, and this will dry clearer. And I know that this wood will dry more yellow, well, sorry, will we'll go more yellow with age. So finishing off like this into there.
Here's the finished bow tie. I think it looks great. The wood will go a bit yellower as it ages. I know that because I've seen the, the original piece of wood. Here's the back, a couple of these pins. That, it's amazing how they are gripping, but you might think of another system, perhaps a little screw or something. And of course, we've got to be careful this doesn't show. But there you go, we've got the, you know, the two ends so we can fit this. Put our shirt on, see how it looks.